Okay, we already learned how to use the turbo prep. Okay, so the turbo prep means the turbo preparation. And you also learn how to use the auto model. Okay. And if you already have your data, so I'm sorry, I have not checked your proposal again, but if you have your data, you can try <clears throat> with the turbo prep and the auto model, okay? And then check what will be the result, uh, what will be the process in the flow of the rapid miner, and if you have some modification on the flow, then you can change. Okay, so uh, I hope that you can try to search from the internet for what will be the best uh, flow when you are doing with your project. Okay, and. When you do with the auto model, you, you already saw that uh, the auto model can create the workflow. <clears throat> okay, I can say that it is the workflow. <clears throat> so if you already have the workflow, yeah, they include what is the basic processing, free processing. So the rapid manner can do automatically what would be the best for the pre processing. The pre-processing can include anything about how to handle the missing value, how to transform your data to do the modeling. Yeah. So after the basic pre-processing finish, yeah, they will create the feature. Okay. We call it this is feature engineering and modeling. And after you have the model, yeah, you can make the visualization. So the visualization meets the tree. Okay. In this case, because we are doing with the decision tree, of course we can see the tree. But if you are doing with the other algorithm, yeah, the result will be different, not in the tree. <clears throat> and for every of your process, yeah, you can see the result. Uh, what you did on the classification is about the accuracy. You can get the accuracy. You can get the precision. You can get the recall. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So that's about the turbo preparation and the auto model. So you can see there are many samples here. So the data set. So the data set contain a lot of data, if you want to use like this market data, maybe the market data is so small. Uh, purchase data is also, it's only just first example. Okay. Yeah, this transaction data. Transaction data is quite a lot, okay? So you can see that uh, you have the customer ID and then the customer bought this product 154 and then there are about uh, three unit that the customer bought right. so this is another customer 41 and then the customer bought product number 40 and he bought like three units so yeah, using this kind of data you can also use it for your uh, team project okay so Anyway, uh, I will take a look on your proposal, the revise of your proposal. And yeah, you can see here, if you want to see any example about the normalization, okay, so they can give you the normalization. And if you are doing the sampling, so if your data are too many, so you cannot do all the analysis, then you can do sampling. So there are some uh, examples about the sampling, or you want to discretize. So we learn about the 
pre-processing, how can we discretize? Maybe we want to use the binning or equal width, equal frequency. And there are many other examples. Uh, of course, it takes time to uh, mention one by one. So you can take a look what is the best uh, approach for your data. Okay? Because every data have different characteristics. And the good things in this uh, rapid miner, they include the deep learning. So you don't need to code in, I don't know, PyTorch or yeah, if you want to do, use the Google Collab. But if you want to uh, have a kind of personalized deep learning, then you can also do it. Okay. So, Oops, sorry, I guess this one is, yeah, if you want to use the deep learning, I guess you need to add more function, okay, let me see. Okay, so they have the deep learning, but this deep learning is only for a very simple activation, okay. So this is the very basic function in the deep learning. So if you want to use deep learning and you want to try with your data set, uh, I guess I have another slide. Okay, anyway, so let's go to the extension. So you can open your rapid miner and then you can go to this extent extension. If you want to see about your um, model, okay, so what kind of extension that you already have? Okay, so you have the model deployment management, okay, you have the model simulator, you have process scheduling, you have time series extension. Okay. So you can add more. Okay. So in the marketplace, In the marketplace, you can search. Oh, oh sorry. I think I, uh, sorry, this one, I didn't share all the, wait. Okay. Okay, sorry. So if you want to see the extension, yeah. Maybe I will read them a little bit about the samples. Okay, so in the samples, uh, you can see a lot of the normalization. Okay, so you can take a look whether you want to do the normalization, you want to do the sampling, you want to do the discretization, and etc. So if you want to do the stratified sampling, or if you want to analyze your outliers data. Okay? or if you have the transactional data and you want to make it as a basket analysis. Okay. So they have all these examples and you can take a look, you can start from now. And yeah, if you want to do the deep learning, so you can go to these extensions and then yeah, you can try this marketplace and there are many things that you can uh, learn from this marketplace. Let's say if you want to go to the stop download, so the rapid miner can give you the idea what kind of tools that already people downloaded. So you can see here it's about the text processing. So if you want to do your uh, analysis on text mining, then yeah, you can install this one. Operator tail toolbox. So is also uh, very important uh, if, if you want to uh, deal with uh, feature engineering. Python scripting. So they have the Python function. So we will learn also about this Python scripting. Web mining. So if you want to collect your data, let's say I want to collect 
from unused. Okay, I want to collect from the uh, Korean Times, or maybe I want to collect the data from the Korea Herald or Tucson Irbo or something. Then you can use this one, and you can uh, get the data if the the website provides the information in JSON format or yeah, if they have another kind of format, so this web mining is powerful. Deep learning, okay, so this is also uh, one of the plugin or one of the function that might be good if you want to explore. And yeah, there are so many, okay. So this is the top download. So let me just uh, install this deep learning. And then I will also install the Python scripting. So let's install these two, Python scripting and deep learning. So if you want to install the other, yeah, it's up to you. Okay. So please install this Python scripting and the deep learning and click on this one, select for installation. And you can see now I have two packages. So I have two packages for the installation. So I will install it. And if you install this one, yeah, it will go to this license. Uh, I think this is just general license. Okay. And yeah, the deep learning also is a general license. You need to accept. And yeah, you can see that the deep learning has dependency. We call this is the dependency because uh, some of the libraries in deep learning depends on this ND4G. So you need to install in total three packages. So you can do the installation. It takes some time yeah, because it's quite big. The deep learning is about 200 mega, and the Python scripting is about I don't know, maybe 200 as well. Okay. Depending on your internet speed, yeah, it will be uh, vary. And after you install this one, usually you need to restart your rapid miner. You don't need to restart your computer, but you can just restart the rapid miner. Okay, so in my case, uh, I already finished with downloading the files. So as you can see, now uh, there's a pop-up and it mentioned that uh, yeah, you need to restart your rapid miner. If you don't restart your rapid miner, it will not give you any effect for the installation. Okay, after you finish with the installation, you can restart the rapid miner so it will give you some effect. Okay, so if you finish with the installation, yeah, you can see like this one. Hello world, okay. <laughs> there is a message that now the rapid miner can be connected with Python. And yeah, if you want to read this article, so it may it will give you the insight how uh, you can do more with the Python. But let me just give you a little bit inside how we can connect it later and for the samples 
Now you can see there is a deep learning here. So they also give you some data set. What kind of data that is good for the deep learning? Let's say this is an Avalon. Avalon, you know Avalon? John Book. So if you if you like uh, seafood, so Avalon is the type of seafood. And yeah, this is the maybe here. Yeah, let me open Avalon. Okay, so this is the seafood. John John Book, right? And they give the information. Okay, if the Avalon sex is male. The length, the diameter, the height, and the whole width, and this is the cup width, yeah. Viscera width, shell width. So they have different kind of width. It's only the shell, or the shark, or only the viscera. Okay. And then about the age, you know, how long the abalone has lived. And yeah. Yeah, there are many other data like the gas station. So this is uh, a kind of time series. Yeah. So they have the date and the price. So we can see the changes, the changes of the price. And this is the, with the respect on the ID. So the ID is the gas station. So here, for example, ID2 in 2016, yeah, this is the price and ID2 in 2016, August 27, the price is increasing. Yeah. So there is a difference or there is a changes. So with this kind of data, yeah, yeah, there are also other data like this airline passenger. This is also another time series. This is month and then how many flight are available for the international flight. Yeah, uh, sorry, the international airline passengers. How many international passengers fly on this day? Yeah. And yeah, you can see if you want to do something like non-sequential data. So if you are doing with the iris flower, yeah, you can have this iris and then you can split the data. Yeah, we know that in the uh, classification, we learn the data should be split. Okay. And after we split, yeah, you can go to the deep learning. So in the if you double click, yeah, you can design. Maybe yeah, I will teach you about this deep learning uh, in two or three weeks later. Okay. But if you already know uh, about the basic idea of deep learning, you can try as well. And then once you finish with the deep learning modeling, so you need to apply the model and then you can calculate the performance. So if you run this one, then yeah, you can get the result. So you don't need to code. So that's why rapid manner is the low code or no code environment. So we get the performance like the accuracy. Oh, this accuracy is very good. 100%. Okay. Yeah. okay, so yeah, you can see the other kind of uh, approaches like the uh, deep learning with the regression, so the deep learning with classification or with the sequential data. So they have uh, the windowing, okay, so you can use this one and uh, you can run and then you can check. What is the result if I want to see the airline passenger? So they have the measure root mean square error. So it means uh, if we are dealing with the regression, we have, uh, let's say <clears throat> this is the model and I have this data. So I want to know the error. Okay. So the error will be calculated for all the data and then we want to find the mean by doing the square. 
तर या दर डेटा इज अबाउट द आई सी यू एंड या यू कैन सी यू कैन सी दिस वन सो दे प्रोफाइड द मॉडल्स एंड यू कैन टेक लुक हाउ वी कैन डू विथ द रिग्रेशन वी कैन डू विथ द क्लासिफिकेशन विथ दो डेटा so the processes okay? so the processes you already learned the simple decision tree and you can learn already about the uh, uh, clustering so you already learned about the decision tree yeah you know how to uh, understand this kind of decision tree and yeah you can also uh later see some example how to get the accuracy okay so apply model okay so you can see this example apply model you will create the decision tree and then you can select what kind of tree that you uh, sorry what i what kind of criterion you want to use you already run the gain ratio information gain gini index and then yeah you will go to the decision tree and then when you apply the model uh, you can uh, check the the model and if you check with the new data okay so this is the play and then this is the prediction this is the real or the actual value and this is the prediction so the actual value is no but the prediction is yes the actual value is yes the prediction is yes and so on so you can apply the model and you can check how the model works and uh, yeah some you, you already know how to calculate the accuracy if we have this this kind of result okay. and yeah this is application they also provide the application like say yeah, if you go to the template if you go to this template they have the application about the chan modeling So they give you the step. For example, first, what is the data? So you will load the data, and then you need to edit and then transform and uh, load the data before you do the analysis. So they define the role and then change the numerical to the binomial, and then yeah, they do the cross validation. So if you do this one, then yeah, you can see that the accuracy is about 98.46% with the binomial classification. So if uh, you have another data like the credit risk modeling, okay, so this is the data. And uh, if you do it the rapid minor, yeah, they give you the process. What is the process that you can do with this uh, credit risk modeling? So first you need to set the rules. You can filter what kind of filtering. So if you can see this one, yeah, if the class is missing, then yeah, you will exclude them. So you not you do not include the data with missing into the analysis. And then you can yeah, select the attributes that you want to use for the modeling. And yeah. There are some ways like this one. They use the support factor machine. And then finally, you can apply the model. So this is another example. Okay, so this is the prediction. And then uh, they don't include the, they don't include the actual value here. Yeah, there are many other examples. They already provide the template. And 
I hope that uh, you can check what is the best example for your project and you can also do with this kind of step. So what is the first step? What is the second step? What is the third step? And what is the fourth step to get the final result? Okay. Okay, so there are many other examples. So let me just skip with this one. And now let's move to the Python connection. Okay, how can we do with the Python for this example? Just make a blank. And at the first time, I guess you already know we can get the Python scripting package in the marketplace okay so you already select the components for the installation and we already finished yeah, i hope that you already finished with the python installation now uh, we need to uh, select where is the python file um, now i'm not sure if your computer has python or not but if you don't have the Python, let me know so I can guide you. What can you do with this Python? But in my current computer, I have my Python. So I have my Python with the Anaconda. So if you don't know how to deal with this Anaconda things, you can download the Anaconda. Okay, Anaconda. It is not the snake. Okay, so it is the data science product. Okay, so it is the data science product or toolkit, and it is open source. So if you don't have this product, uh, you can install this one. Okay? And once you install this Anaconda, you will have the Python file in your computer. So let me assume that you already have this uh, Anaconda. If you don't have Make sure that you install it first. So now let's go to the setting. So in the rapid manner, we have the setting. And then you can select the preferences. In these preferences, yeah, you can uh, set up your environment. Let's say now I'm using English. Okay. Yeah, there is no other language at this moment. Yeah, I'm sorry, there is no Korean. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I hope that it's not that difficult to understand this system. And you can go to this section, Python scripting. So in the Python scripting, they will ask you what is your default Python. Are you using the Anaconda or are you using the virtual environment wrapper that is a way for doing this uh, Python connection with the virtual environment? But I would like to recommend you to use the specific Python binaries. With your specific Python binaries, yeah, it depends where you install your Python. If you install your Python in the default folder, yeah, you can use this Conda environment. Okay? But because I do not put the Conda in the default, so I need to use this specific Python binaries. And we need to define where is the Python. Okay? So here, I guess yeah, the, they know where I save my Python. But if you do not know your python file so you can take a look okay you can find your folder yeah in my case this is the folder where i use this anaconda okay? and then this is the folder that the python.exe is located so you need to find where is the location of the python.exe Because this Python is on this path, 
okay, in this Python by the request, so I can just open and then you can test. So if everything is fine, then yeah, they will give you this sign. Then your Python installation is set up correctly. Okay. And if you finish with this installation, you can just click OK. So it means everything now set for doing the Python in the Rapid Mind. Okay, so this is the step. Yeah, I hope you don't have any difficulties. But if you have any problems, please let me know later. And the next, uh, you will need the operator to run the Python in Rapid Miner. So you can go to this uh, operator, select the execute Python. You can find execute Python. Okay. So if you run this uh, operator, it will go to error because you need to specify the source. So if you if you click on this operator and then if you edit the text okay. so you can see that this operator actually they have one parameter which is data okay. so if you don't have the data yeah because there is no data so it is error yeah, at this moment i uh, I'm not sure. Is there any of you who does not understand Python? Because, uh, yeah, I, I didn't teach Python at this class. So if you have difficulties with Python, so let me know. Okay. I, I thought that uh, all the students in this class know about Python. So uh, I, did it, I didn't teach Python in this class so if this one is difficult for you let me know okay. in the basic idea of python this is a function and then in this function we have one parameter which is data but we have no data that's why this code goes to error okay. so the, uh, if you want to try you can delete this one or you can create any data So if you run, okay, script line number 11. Okay, so I still have this, uh, maybe let me just close this one. Uh, and okay, let me close this one and then I can just return data two. Okay, the data two is from the pandas and this is the data frame. Okay. So let me just try. Yep, we can get the data 3, 5, 77, and 8. Where is this data come from, coming from? Okay, this is from the code. We have a function. We can print hello world. And then there is a data frame and the data is 3, 5, 77, and 8. And after we divide this data, after we finish the execution of this function, please return data 2. So data 2 is 3, 5, 77, and 8. Okay. So that's why you can see 3, 5, 77, and 8. Now, you will have questions. In the Python script, we have print hello world. So where is the hello world? Did you see here? There is no hello world, okay? There is no hello world here. So, 
yeah, when the Python environment, usually we need this kind of lock. Okay, we call it lock. We call it lock. The lock is necessary to understand if we want to know the result in the middle of our code. Let's say I do not understand why this process goes error. So you want to make a kind of yeah statement to check the line before the error. Then you need to understand about the log. So in Python, uh, it's easy to see the log. But how can we see the log in Rapid Miner? Uh, let me check this one. I guess I, yeah, I put this one. Okay, so to see the result, you can open the log. Okay? And the, if the log panel is not available, you can go to the menu view and then select show panel and then select log. Okay, so let me teach you. You can go to the view and then go to the show panel and then you can see log. And you can see there is log in the pillow part of rapid finder now you can see there is a lock here hello world okay can you see mm, what is <clears throat> could not find conda comment in the search pad click at the folder that can the, the conda executable Okay, I think at this moment, I think I can skip this one. Okay, so if it is necessary, I think I will add this. <clears throat> but yeah, the Python script can be run. So if you want to see the result again, let's say uh, I will change. Hello, Bernardo. Okay, so I, I will put my name. And then if I apply, and then if, if I run in, okay, and then you can check. Yeah, hello, Bernardo. Now it is printed. Okay, so it means it is the log of your uh, environment. So this is not only the log for the Python, but it is log also for the Rapid Miner. So whenever you have any errors, so you can see what is the error and how can you solve the error. Okay, now. Uh, we need to understand how we can apply to a kind of learning mechanism, okay? Because uh, I have taught the Python in the other courses, okay? so I assume that yeah, you can do with Python. So let's just try with the. Uh, example that i give to you in the e class so i think i give you examples so you can import process Yeah, so we have two uh, process. So I already share in the E class. First is the for Python connection before. Okay, so you can open this one, and then you can check. So I created this one for you. The first is about the ETL. What is ETL? Okay, so ETL is extract, transform, and load. Okay. Yeah, we have extract, transform, load. So we 
use the standard EDL for this one. What is the standard EDL here? So actually, this is a sub process. Okay. Maybe in your final project or your in in your team project, you will need to do this one as well. Okay. So the data should be filtered, and then you need to map. What is mapping? Okay. In this case, we want to map. Uh, okay. Let's let's see one by one. Okay. Retrieve customer. So if you want to see this customer data. How can I see this one? So this is the customer churn data. So you can go to, I think you can go to this repository, not this one, local repository. Where is it? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, in the data on the hotel app customer. Okay. In the hotel app customer, we have customer churn data. So if you double click, yeah, you can see this kind of data. Okay, so it consists of the postal code, has code. Okay, so this is common. Okay, let's say if you do the payment with credit card, okay, they will not share the credit card number. They will share you the has code. This is for the security. And then this is the person who pay about the hotel. His age is 64, he is male, and his payment with the credit card. And then the last transaction is on yeah, this date. And the churn date, it means uh, the churn, it's like the repetition. So the customer will come back or not to this. So if you can see the question mark, question mark, so we can, Try to predict. Okay. We can try to predict when will be the customer return back. So using this data, yeah, we want to do the modeling. Okay. And you can see that the modeling consists of several steps. At these steps, we want to filter the example. What is filtering? The first is to filter the age, right? Of course, we want to get only the person who are in the good range of the age. You do not want to get the person who are more than 100 years. Okay? So you don't want to get the person who are under 15 because maybe under 15, they don't have the credit card or maybe the data is error. So you filter with this, and then you want to map. Okay, in this mapping, yeah, maybe we know that uh, they have the data. Maybe this data is not in English, you know, so yeah, some of them they use the German. So these old values map into the new value. The web click is female and manly is. Mill. So, yeah, there's a kind of uh, changes of the parameter value. And then you want to replace the missing values. So, let's say this is uh, just filtering, it's very simple about the gender. And we want to change with the average. So, what is the average of the gender? So, if the gender has, I guess this result is, yeah, the gender, most of the, if in the average is male, then you will change it with the male. And then date to numerical. So, you can see there's an option how we can uh, have the date. If the data is about date, then 
you can change it to yeah, for example year or you want to change to month okay or yeah if you want to specify the time unit maybe if you want to make it over into hour or you want to make it into minute or you want to make it into the higher one quarter half year or year so you can also define this one and then let's say you have some numeric okay but actually it is a polynomial you know polynomial poly poly means many nominal nominal means yeah nominal attributes we know that uh, postal code postal code postal code actually is number right for example in our in mohyon the postal code is one seven one seven zero three five but is it really a number actually no okay. so there is a meaning with this number maybe this is the one is means the gyeonggi seven it means like the i don't know the choingu or something okay so every of the number has a meaning so that's why we need to change this into nominal not numerical and let's say this one they have the attributes generation okay if there is a missing value with the churn date then yeah you can put it as a loyal or if it is not then it is churn so the postal code yeah we want to put the prefix postal code comma one so we want to select only the first number of the postal code and then the setting the rule so if the rule is churn then it will be the label okay. so using this kind of mechanism you need to determine also your process okay okay i think i will uh, stop here first let's have a break i will continue after the break <laughs>